Somehow, some way, the Vegas Golden Knights have found themselves in the second round. This despite, of course, having a weaker team. This despite, of course, having to rely on a backup goaltender in Malcolm Subban, who did not finish with all that great of a save percentage, especially for a six-game series. That said, Robin Leonard, our one-year stopgap, is back. We'll see what he can do, and we'll look for our top line mainly to be the ones to step up. They they could do better. Uh, the fourth line as well. Hopefully we see a little bit better from them. Defensively, not much change. Bronstrom is going to be with Yossi Haig, Hamilton, Theodore, and Wu. That way we still have Yossi, Hamilton, and Theodore on their own pairings, and you know we don't have any weaknesses on paper. You know the story at this point with our team. It's fairly straightforward. No changes have been made. We're just enjoying the ride for now because really we shouldn't be here. That said, after dispatching of one Canadian team, we need to get rid of another. That being the Edmonton Oilers. And this is the squad that we are going up against. Milan Lucic, Connor McDavid, and Jesse Pugliarvi make up the top line. Uh, point total wise, you'll get a look there. So McDavid, a point, a game player. Second line is Kyler Yamamoto with Leon Dreisaitl and Pontus Aberg. I heard, I've heard people lately pronouncing it Aberg, and I'm like, is that right? Pretty sure it's not. Pontus Aberg, who, of course, uh, in real life went to the Anaheim Ducks. And then again, I think he got put back on waivers. So who knows what the hell is going on in the life of Pontus Aberg. Third line is Drake Kajula with Jujar Akira and Kirill Maximoff. The great names line, as we'll call it. Fourth line is Patrick Bykoff with Zemkis Kirkinsons and Zach Cassian. So not the strongest team on paper, but they have a certain individual who might cause us some trouble. Defensively, it's also not the strongest on paper, but we've seen teams with worse do quite well. Oscar Clefbaum is on that top pairing with Darnell Nurse. Second pair is Andre Sekera, who managed to stay healthy this season, apparently, with Matt Benning. And the third pairing is Mats Jilson, a sixth-round pick of theirs previously, who was on that third pair with Evan Bouchard. The goaltender is probably Cam Talbot. It is Cam Talbot. It's not going to be Stuart Skinner. And as well, for a one, uh, you know, for a, a first series, six games, not the highest save percentage. Ryan Strom is hurt. Mackenzie Wegar and Marvin Stasiak are scratches. A 15th overall pick is Stasiak, so it's kind of surprising to not see him in. It's an interesting Edmonton lineup, of course, as we've seen. They also managed to get through their first round series in six games. How this one plays out is anyone's guess. How confident am I, you might ask? I don't know what to expect anymore. Seems like the... The bit, you know, the more question marks, the bigger the question marks surrounding our team, the better we seem to do. So we'll see what Robin Leonard can do as he regains control of the crease. Let's see what the team can do in general. The second round matchup against the Oilers begins right now. First period of game one. Can we make the most of home ice advantage? And we get off to a good start. Our Temi Panarin scores 32 seconds in. Gergensen ties it, and some guy named Connor McDavid uh, gives them the first lead of the game. 12 shots to 9 in their favor. Second period is scoreless, which isn't great. Could have been worse for us. Shots are close enough to even, but we need a goal. And when you go into the third period needing a goal, oftentimes this game laughs at you as Leon Dreisaitl makes it 3. Milan Lucic makes it 4. Oh, Robin, what are you doing to me? What are you doing? I, I've i had so many bad experiences with Robin Leonard in playoff sims. <laughs> so I don't know if I expected anything anything more. As we are only going to get one goal past Cam Talbot. Edmonton takes game one by the score of 4-1. to one. We scored 32 seconds in and could not get another puck past Cam Talbot. Brutal, really. And Robin Leonard got hurt. And is out again. Cool. For the record, he was back to 100%. It's not like we started him early. Uh, so that that solves that. Malcolm Subban will be in. And to be honest, down the stretch, I could have sworn it never said a goal was scored against Malcolm Subban. I could have been wrong. Leonard was abysmal. And that, that makes the decision easy for me heading into this next game. Now, doesn't it? <laughs> game two, Subban will be between the pipes. 
and hopefully we can get off to a good start yet again, but actually have a little bit of a follow-up. Needless to say, Edmonton's already accomplished their goal. We need to make sure we at least win one game here. First period of game two. No changes to make aside from the goaltending, and it's scoreless. 11 shots to 10 in their favor. We'll go ahead and sim the second period, and that's nice. Tate Dwyer scored just before the halfway point. That is the only goal of the game thus far. 22 shots to 17. So the third period we go. Can the defense and the goaltending hold on? Power play for the Oilers goes to waste. Power play for the Golden Knights goes to waste. Halfway through the third, the next goal, if there is one, is going to be oh so important. Under five minutes to go, can Malcolm Subban hold on? Carlson, the empty netter, and Malcolm Subban, ladies and gentlemen. 2 nothing is your final. So we go from a 4-1 loss to a 26-save shutout for Malcolm Subban. He's our guy going forward, obviously. I mean, even if Leonard wasn't hurt, I was very tempted to put Malcolm back in for Game 2 just to see what happened or what would happen. And, uh, yeah, worked out for us. So... Advantage Edmonton in that they took a game on the road to start the series. But good on Malcolm Subban to battle back, have a strong performance, and help get us the victory. Because of that win, I'm not going to make any lineup changes, so we're good to continue onward. Game 3, series heads to Edmonton. Let's see what we can do. First period, it's a goal apiece. Auber gets the opening goal. Tate Dwyer scores again. He's been big for us so far in the series. He ties it up. They outshot us 14-7. to They doubled us up, but we're tied on the board. Second period. Still tied on the board. They're killing us in shots. Again, still nearly have us doubled up. It's 25 shots to 13. Right now, Malcolm Subban doing his job, giving us every opportunity to succeed. Needless to say, this next goal is oh so important. Power play. Come on. Yes, Shea Theodore. We have the lead. Can we hold it? Halfway through the third. We're still getting hammered in shots. Another power play opportunity goes to waste. 316 to go. Stone Cold approved. Malcolm Subban holds on again. He's a wizard. 2 1 final. Two games, only one goal against. Malcolm Subban, a 32 save performance. Shea Theodore gets the winning goal in the third period. And the comeback is complete. From 1-0 down in this series to 2-1 up. Malcolm Subban taking advantage of this opportunity. Not sure how much longer he's going to be here. He'll probably get a payday as a result of this series. Let me take a look, though, quickly at his numbers now. Yeah, that's more like it. A 9-32. Not bad. Vladar, of course, hasn't seen any action in the postseason. Still a little bit worried about Robertson and Dubé. Unfortunately, in terms of call-ups, uh, we really don't have any options unless we want to put in guys like Matthias or Glenn Denning. We do have Johan Larson, but not really sure how much there is to do there. Cody Egan. In general, that third line's actually been kind of quiet, too. So, you know, let's make, uh, let's make a change. I know Robertson and Dubé haven't done much, but we'll see what they can... You know what? Mm. Eh. I mean, Tuck was okay in that first round. Let's go with that for now, just to just to change it up. And in fairness, that second line has been quiet too. We need players to continue to step up. Uh, these have been some close games. Game four begins now. We can't be relying solely on Malcolm Subban and uh, Tate Dwyer. We need some other guys to step up here. Let's hope that's the case. Game four, will we have a 3-1 series lead for game five back home in Vegas? Or will the series be all tied up? Let's find out. First period, and Edmonton has the lone goal. It's Pontus Auberg again. Sheesh, 11 shots to 6 in their favor. Second period, oh boy. Auberg, oh my god. He's an animal. 18 shots to 15, but the two goals from Auberg are the difference makers right now. We go to the third period. Can our offense find a way to get going? We need two quick goals. One goal and then like 10 minutes of past time isn't going to help us. Especially considering there's about 10 minutes left. Power play chance. An extended power play chance. Please goes to waste. And that is the death knell 
in this game. Cam Talbot shuts us out. 2 nothing victory for the Oilers. It's a best of three from this point on. The series is all tied up at two apiece. Subban had a pretty strong game. 30 saves, though, from Cam Talbot's. And again, it's a best of three from this point on. One win and one loss for both teams at home at this point. The Avalanche have a 3-1 series lead on L.A. So it's looking like the winner will move on to play Colorado. So goaltending-wise, it's not a question. Malcolm plays. Defensively, five points for Bronstrom and a minus one. Only three points for Roman Yossi. Yikes. Nothing from Haig and a minus four. Three points for Hamilton. Two points for Theodore. Nothing from Jet Wu, but he's not a minus player. Again, three points for Yossi. Hamilton Hamilton and Yossi have the same uh, stat line. So again, one point. No points for Jet Wu, but a plus one. Theodore's been okay. Haig's been pretty disappointing. I think what we're going to do, because I've played Haig with pretty much everybody so far. Pretty much. I'm going to do something crazy here. Let's go with Bronstrom Theodore. I, I will put Yossi Hamilton as the top pairing, but we're going to unite them. We'll go Bronstrom Theodore, Haig, and Wu. And we'll see how that works out for us. And then forward wise, five points for Panarin, six for Carlson, six for Dwyer. The third line again has been, a, or the second line has been a little bit quiet. Still nothing. From the bottom six. We have to change something up in the bottom six. We have to. They've been far too quiet. So like D uh, Dylan Dubay, Robertson, Stelio at least has two points. Cody Eakin only has one goal. We need to bring in some other players to try and spark something here. So Robertson and Dubay. Uh, Johan Larson will probably get the chance here. So now it's just a matter of who else do I want to call up. And there's a chance of it being Jones. Let me take a look at the individual attributes. Uh, not a great skater, but physical, responsible defensively. Bembridge, not a great skater, not great defensively. Yeah, unless we go with like a Sean Mathias or Luke Lindenning, it's going to be Jones. So let's call up Jones. We'll make these changes. Of course, we do have the morale system on, so some players are going to be pissed about it, but it is what it is. So again, defensively, Yossi Hamilton, Bronstrom, Theodore. Yossi Hamilton, Bronstrom, and Theodore. And then on the offensive side of things, uh, Jones will be on the fourth line again. Mateo's two points. Eakin with a point. Hmm. Tough call as far as what to do here. I think what I'm going to do is probably that. We'll go Larson, Mateos, and uh, actually, can Jones? Yeah, Jones is a center. So is Stelio for that matter. Jones is a little bit better. So we'll go Larson, Jones, Mateos. Although, in fairness, we know this current third line combo has been ineffective. So let's have Larson play there. We'll have Eakin on the fourth line. And then again, that second line, I'm concerned about just because there hasn't been much develop or you know production from that line. So I might try something a tad bit crazy. I am going to try something a tad bit crazy. Yep, I'm going to try something a tad bit crazy. Let's see, Glass, five points, seven points for Roach, six points for Suzuki. Roach can't play center. Suzuki can. That's the combo right there. Dwyer, Suzuki, Panarin, Carlson, Glass, and Roach. Let's just try it. Why not? Why not? Just offensively? We need a bit of a spark, let's be honest. As far as the offense goes, it's really just Ben Tate Dwyer carrying us. So as long as he's on the top line, I'm fine. We need we need something. We need some sort of spark offensively. I know the series is tied, but something had to be done, in my opinion. We'll see whether or not this works out. I mean, it, it can't be worse in terms of getting shut out already twice in the series. So we'll see what we can do here. Back at home for Game 5. Needless to say, a win here would be nice. Let's see how it goes. First period is scoreless. Ten shots to six in their favor. Not to mention, we have been outshot in quite a few periods. Second period, good lord. <laughs> okay. Drake Kajula gets the opening goal. Lucic scores just under two minutes later. From there, Panarin gets on the board, and then Cody Eakin as well. 
we are tied. 24 shots to 16 in their favor, but two all on the board. This is going to be a crazy third period, I have a feeling. Even if it's down to just one goal, how this plays out is going to be interesting. I certainly hope it ends up going in our favor. Power play, five on three for the Oilers, and we can't kill it. Leonard, the fuck do you mean Leonard? He's out until May. It's impossible for him to be back. What? Is the game broken? Pull your RV. Is that going to be the winner? Yeah, McDavid, the empty netter. I don't think... Am I wrong on what... It's May... I thought he wasn't back until, like, the the 7th. And even then, he shouldn't have been allowed, like... I guess... Oh, God. Okay. Well, I guess best lines put him back in. Because technically, you can have it set to... Oh, well, I don't want to report back that he's available to play until he's 100%. But if you go best lines, it can put him back in the lineup. I'm not saying that cost us the game, really. I mean, it was really a 3-2 final. But, yeah, he played it less than 100%. Cool. I'm going to have to sim up to the day anyway because of auto-rotate. Then again, auto-rotate's on. So, yeah. Shit. All right, cool. Yeah, there you go. Robin Leonard's back. Neat. Neat. Game six in Edmonton. Series is on the line after that very disappointing loss on home ice in game five. Subban will be back between the pipes, and we will hold a team meeting. Fellas, it all comes down to this. I'm going to say what I would actually say, all right? Because I know I could just go demanding. Let me say what I would actually say, right? And I think think I'd probably go calming yeah just don't get flustered and execute that's exactly what I'd say they're gonna get pissed yep a lot of people got pissed but that's fine I'm gonna start handling this like I'd actually handle it I'm a calming motivating voice in case you didn't know game six the season is on the line the series is on the line let's do it here we go first period Goal apiece. Tate Dwyer again. Milan Lucic was able to tie it. They had a slight edge in shots. Second period. Yikes. Okay. Pugliarvi makes it 2-1. to one. Tuck ties it. Auberg again scores. 3-2 Edmonton. They have the advantage in shots. They have the advantage on the board. They have the advantage in the series. We need quick goal and we have a power play chance can we do it we can't come on <clears throat> Connor mcdavid Connor mcdavid we're in a lot of trouble we are in a lot of trouble we need some quick goals here where it's all over power play this has to be in and it's not and that's gonna do it barring a crazy comeback the edmonton oilers will eliminate the vegas golden knights in six games we did well to make it that far but in the end, the lack of an elite goaltender and the underperformance of quite a few players really let us down, especially from the bottom six. Oh, boy. Uh, that, that top answer is pretty solid. A lot of you gave it your all out there. That's not true. Any more of you guys next year? I think we had a good season. Uh, we need to be better and work harder. That's true. I don't care if you get pissed. That's That's my true voice right there. You needed to be better. We needed players to step up. Don't care if you get pissed. Facts are facts. However, we did overperform. <laughs> we did. Malcolm was still solid, but it's obvious. Like That's that's the best Malcolm Subban we're probably going to get. Uh, Leonard was abysmal. This was his one season tryout just to fill a void. He'll be gone, obviously. Defensively, again, uh, the talk of moving a Yossi, a Hamilton, both disappointed tremendously. And we're outscored. Actually, in fairness, Yossi had the same amount of points as Bronstrom, which is hilarious given the overall differential. Theodore as well. Pretty disappointing. Our defense definitely didn't step up. Uh, we know the bottom six didn't step up. Tate Dwyer had five goals, which is solid. But just in general, pretty much everybody underperformed, I'd say. So that's, that's the way the cookie crumbles when basically everybody on the team underperforms. That said, we are going to sim. I'm not doing the draft in this episode because, as a comment said in the last episode, oh, well, it's short. You must have lost. Mm -mm. So we are going to keep it short. But, of course, the goal is to get Russell Clausen. We have pretty much decided upon that. 
Uh, I would normally have done the draft, but now that people think that would be a tad bit predictable, you get to wait. You get to wait. Uh, we will, of course, take a look, though, at the awards and the draft lottery results to see who we potentially have to work with to try and get a deal done to be able to trade up and get Klaassen. It's going to be expensive one way or another as Toronto wins the Stanley Cup. Toronto. Toronto. Bakersfield also uh, take home the Calder Cup. Let's take a look here. Around the league, the Maple Leafs win it all. Did they beat Edmonton in the final? They did not. Colorado beat the Oilers in five, and the Avs fall to Toronto in five. We'll take a look at the cup-winning team, as, of course, is tradition. Toronto. Cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. William Nylander. Hey, leading scorer. Marner, Tavares, Kadri. Basically, are there any surprising names? Riley Sheehan, Michael Froelich, uh, and Sammy and Ninimaki, former 21st overall pick. Defensively, no real surprises outside of the addition of guys like Adam Larson and uh, Alec Martinez, which, in fairness, are pretty big additions. Goaltender, Frederick Anderson. Frederick J. Anderson. There you go. Toronto wins it. So it was Tampa in year one. Boston, Philly, and Toronto. The Eastern dominance continues. Tampa won the Presidents. Didn't help them out much. Stamkos wins the Art Ross and the Hart. Dowdy wins the Norris. Patrick Kane and Lady Bing. The Calder goes to Sam Steele. Con Smythe to Anderson. So in all four years, it was a goaltender. Holpe wins the Vesna. And the Jennings goes to Vasilevsky. Spiza wins the Masterton. Barzell, the Selkie. Ted Lindsay to Stamkos, and Patrick Kane to the Rocket Richard. Down in the AHL, Warren, is it Fajile? I think it is. I think it is. Put up the most points. Seth Griffith was league MVP. Jason Spezza <laughs> scored the most goals in the Panthers minor league club that shall not be named because they're terrible. Uh, best rookie was Josephson in Bridgeport. Ty Smith was the defenseman of the year. Michael Hutchinson, the goaltender of the year. MVP of the playoffs, Olivier Rodrigue. Michael Rasmussen. Stuart Percy and Thomas Grice also take home some awards before we get to the lottery. The lottery. The lottery. Uh, let's take a look here. Oh, boy. Yeah, now's the right time to move on from Yossi, even if that is morale-based. Let's take a look. So, decent season for Bronstrom. Isaiah Norton's going to be ready to step up next year, which is nice. And we'll actually go down to the AHL to see some of the greens. Uh, Zachariah Rizzi is going to be looking pretty good. You guys can see some of the development here. A lot of these guys, I mean, hell, freaking Alf Nilstorp even up to a 62. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good about our chances. Of course, we took, you know, that rebuilding step heading into this season, and that will only continue. Only difference is we plan on having a franchise player added to the mix. Allegedly, the next Lemieux the team we're going to have to deal with to get that done is San Jose. However, we have two top 10 picks, Carolina and New York. So that worked out quite well. We knew we had two chances. We still get two top 10 picks, which I'm very happy about. Those will have the value that we need alongside someone like a Hamilton or a Yossi to get the deal done Russell Claus and you guys voted. I mean, granted, the point total is a bit low, but he's 17 years old, uh, playing in the Swiss Men's League. He's going to be the guy. He is going to be the guy. We're going to get that done at the beginning of the next episode, along with the rest of the draft. Retired players, Eric Stahl, Joe Pavelski, Jason Spezza, Steen, Keith, Ladd, among other defensemen, Cronwall, Edler, Scarra. Jack Johnson in Pittsburgh. Goaltenders, Mike Smith, Yara Halak, Jimmy Howard, and Justin Pogge, Leafs legend Justin Pogge, all call it a day. With that, I thank you for watching. You know the deal. Support the video. Support the channel. Check out everything in the description and click that stupid bell. I will see you guys in the next one where... Yeah, we're going to get a franchise-level player, aren't we? It's pretty much the only way to say it. Spoiler alert.